Hello, everybody. My name's Chris North. I'm the Master of Ceremonies here for the Sydney. Welcome to Session 6 of the 2021 Sydney International Online Piano Competition Broadcast. Earlier today, we heard from Alexander Klushko from Russia and Maxwell Foster from Australia. This afternoon, we have two competitors performing, one from Russia, Rustam Muradov, and one from the Russian background but living in Canada, Alexander Malikov. Now here's a re re quick recap of where we're at. It's day four of the competition, 20 preliminary competitors to go, two sessions daily with two competitors featuring in each session, each performing a 40 minute solo recital. Three weeks of incredible virtuosic piano performances, three thrilling rounds. Before we dive right in, let's hear from artistic director Piers Lane interviewing Ara Vatukian from Theme and Variations. Ara has been a long-standing extended family member, a tremendous supporter of the Sydney over 40 years. He's also the founder and director of Theme and Variations Piano Services. He is regarded as one of Australia's leading concert technicians and piano experts. Thanks, Chris. Ara Vatukian, lovely to have the chance to chat to you because you've been involved with the piano competition for a very long period. Absolutely, and good to see you too. My first involvement was in 1981 when I was working at the Conservatory of Music, uh, teaching the piano tuning course there, and Rex Hopcroft was the artistic director, and he asked me to be on the advisory board uh, with the competition, because at the time we were also looking after all the rehearsal pianos, all the pianos that the competitors were, were practicing on. So that's when I started becoming involved, and I've been involved in some form ever since, up till 2012. So it's been a, a long time. In fact, even with the 2016 one, I was involved in the background too. In the first competition, there were 40 competitors. And so finding practice facilities for 40 pianists, plus the jurors who want to do their practice as well. And I think there were, there were at least nine jurors then. Uh, you had your work cut out for you advising on <laughs> pianos. <laughs> Absolutely. Because even with the second one, um, we were going through all the pianos in the morning every day. We'd go and touch up all the pianos that the competitors were going to practice on at the Xertorium. And also, don't forget, the Xertorium was still working at the time, so there was, there was still students there. So it was all in between the two, trying to find uh, rooms and allocate rooms and making sure the pianos were okay and fixing up any broken strings or anything like that that was happening at the time. So it was quite uh, quite interesting background. To the competition. Well, after the competitors, the pianos are the most important part of a piano competition. And in the first two, at least, competitions, there were six instruments to choose from. Yes, yes. And eventually it went down to four. And, and then I think from 1992 onwards, it was three. So the uh, Steinway, the Yamaha and the Kauai. Uh, previous to that, there was a Bosendorfer. There was a, uh, um, I think there was also a Brechstein at one point and an August Foster as well in some of the previous competitions, but eventually it went down to the three uh, uh, instruments. You run Theme and Variations, which is one of the great piano services in Australia, and you had the remit for Steinway in Australia for a long time. Yes, and with that, we were always supportive of the, of the Steinway instruments. And then from 2000 onwards, uh, we, we were personally responsible for the supply and servicing of the Steinway piano for the competition. So I looked after the uh, Steinway, the main uh, instrument for the competition from 2000, 2004, 8 and 12 as well. And it was a very interesting period because I really enjoyed that work, even though it's a really, really uh, difficult task. In most cases, when you're dealing with a pianist for a, for a, a normal recital, you're dealing with one person. You set the piano up as well as you can, and the pianist comes in, plays the piano, and if they have anything that wanted to move around, then you ask them, they ask you and you do some voicing here, some regulation there, some tuning there, and so on. Then they get many hours to work with the piano and get used to the instrument. With a piano competition, you've got 36 or so young pianists who probably don't have as much experience. They're all very nervous. They all want the absolute best out of the piano. So you have to then try and cater for all those different choices and all those different ideas and, and, and nervousness with the pianist. So it becomes a little bit more difficult. It's probably the, the Everest of the piano technician's uh, job to look after a, a piano for a piano competition. 
Yes, I suppose, you know, when you've got in one session, say, four pianists and they all want something different, you can't possibly cater to them all. A lot of it must be psychological as well. You have to be a bit of a therapist. <laughs> yes, you do. And that's why it's very important for the technicians to actually get to know and talk to the uh, young pianists. And having access to them in the green room and so on is, is very good because that's a relaxed uh, process. And you can then talk to them and see what they're after and actually explain to them what you're doing and how you're trying to do the best for everyone for that uh, session. Sometimes they don't quite understand the acoustics uh, issues. For example, at the Seymour Centre where you have an instrument on the stage in a theatre and it's not a concert hall, the, what, sounds, what, you, what sound you get on the stage is quite different to what the audience and particularly what the judges can hear. So you're trying to get a balance between what the judges hear in the, with the piano and what is on stage. And you have to then relate that and explain that to, to the competitors as to why the piano is probably a little bit brighter than what they would like or uh, perhaps a little bit different in the voicing or in the tuning because you're trying to get the best for the, uh, for the, for the audience and also for the judges. And that can happen anyway. I suppose those years that you were particularly involved with the Steinway were the Seymour Hall years, yes. and that's a very different acoustic from the Verbruggen Hall at the Conservatorium, yes. where the first competitions were held, yes. and then went back there in 2016. Mm. And that's a, a rather intimate but lovely acoustic. Mm. And then that piano has to go on to the Opera House for the concertos yes. at the end, which is a totally different kettle of fish. Absolutely, and then you've got a very short period in which to expand the, the, si the sound of the instrument in order to fill that large hall and also fill against the orchestra as well. Because a solo piano on its own will have a different sound, different quality, whereas mixing with the orchestra, it's also different as well, particularly with, uh, not so much with the Mozart uh, concertos, but with the later 20th century concertos and large concertos. A Prokofiev concerto, for example, is quite a different uh, ball game than a, than, a, than a Mozart concerto. So you've got a massive orchestra, You've got this piano in the front, which has to be heard over the orchestra, and uh, the pianist has to be able to play that with confidence. So you, the setup is quite different. You were asked by Steinways to represent them and to be the technician for the last Tchaikovsky International Piano Competition. Was that a very different experience from Sydney? Uh, yes, it was. So the last two, I did the one in 2015 and also 2019. And it was certainly a, a learning experience because the work itself is the same, but the people around you, the facilities and the politics around you is quite different. Obviously, Russia and Moscow are quite different places than Sydney uh, and, and things work differently there. And you have to work within that. And it's the same thing. You do your job within, those, within the politics of the situation and trying to get the competitors to understand you and get their confidence in what you're doing with the piano. For example, in Moscow as well, the acoustics of the hall are fantastic, but where the judges sit is terrible <laughs> because the judges sit about five rows in and the stage is very high. So sound. the sound just goes right over the top of the judges. So in order to get the sound to be good for the judges, you have to make the piano quite different than what is being heard in the hall. And when the competitors are selecting, they often have their teachers or friends or someone in the hall texting them to say how the pianos are sounding and they're sitting way back in the hall. <laughs> so you have to try and explain to them that no, 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 this is not what's going to actually happen realistically when you start playing. And of course, they're being recorded as well, yes. probably streamed these days. Yes. And so then you have mics quite close to the piano as well. It's always a dilemma for the pianist when you see a mic stuck in the piano and one hanging just there and you're actually playing to the back of a hall, That's it right. completely, you don't know where to play, you know? Mm. And also uh, within the competition itself, you've got the four different rounds. So you make the piano a little bit different for each round in order to get the best out of that particular round. For example, the first round is usually very sparkly, very fast uh, technical work. Uh, when the piano has to be really, really fast, really, really sharp, in its, in its performance. But then in the second and third rounds where you have the deeper, meaning more meaningful, longer pieces, uh, then, then you, have, you want to get more quality out of the instrument, more singing quality, more resonance. So you tend to work with the piano to make, the, make those differences and then also get the confidence of the 
pianist saying that this is what I'm going to be doing to get the best sound for you uh, and the audience. I changed everything with the 2016 competition here because I'd heard endless tales of you know, political intrigues and sabotage and all sorts of things backstage, yes. extraordinary stories at piano competitions mm. between um, piano brands and that sort of yes. thing. And of course, many pianists, me included, are Steinway artists mm. and we have, it's a friend to find a Steinway yeah. in a new concert hall really makes you feel at home, even though, you know, uh, all pianos are different, of course, but there's a big yes. family resemblance. You know what you're doing. But in the real world, you play what you're given. And I wanted to change things in Sydney so that all the piano brands were fairly represented so that not, you know, 70 or 80% of people automatically chose Steinway. Mm. And it, it's very tough on the other mm. brands because they spend an enormous amount of mm. money to bring their instruments, to uh, put technicians up, to provide all the facilities. And um, it's very difficult to organize everything backstage in a totally equitable manner. So yeah. I decided to have four pianos, mm. um, Steinway and Fazioli and Yamaha and Kawai. And made it prescriptive so that the 32 competitors were divided into four groups. They all played, eight of them played one piano, the next eight played the next brand and so on for the four brands for the first preliminary round. For the second preliminary round, they moved on to the next one in their alphabetical list so that all of the pianos were played an equal number of times in the preliminaries. And then in the semi-final round, the 12 competitors went on to the third and fourth pianos in their list. For the finals, they could choose what they would play in the opera house. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just wonder if you've got a comment. I know you weren't involved in that competition. Yes, I wasn't involved. But look, it's interesting. There's like um, like elections. There's no perfect system of uh, of, of, of piano choosing in, in competitions. And there's pros pros and cons in both. The pros for doing a selection is that the competitors then are comfortable with their own selection. They've actually made their own uh, decision, so they're playing that instrument. The cons uh, uh, with that system is that you have more backroom dealings, you have more manufacturers trying to persuade the competitors to play their instruments. And then, of course, because you've got young pianists who are often not uh, experienced, they have difficulty choosing. They'll go, they've only got 20 minutes to choose between four or five or six pianos. And it does make it difficult for them. And particularly when, in the, uh, when they've got people in the audience texting them and saying, no, you sound good on that one, don't play on that one, and so forth. So there is the issue with that. The issue with the other system is that the problem arises if one of the pianos or two of the pianos out of the selection that you're, you're prescribed to play isn't as well prepared as the next piano. Then the competitor then has to play a piano that they're not comfortable with and perhaps they're, uh, it's not as well prepared, whereas another competitor will be playing a piano that, that is well prepared and they're more comfortable with. So there's pros and cons on, on both systems and I think uh, it's a matter of choosing. The ultimate system is to have one piano for everyone to play, but that's also difficult uh, for, for different reasons. Indeed, and in real life we have to play what we're faced with and exactly. part of the art of being an international concert pianist is adapting immediately yeah. to what's in front of us. So yes. anyway, thank you so much, Ara. We must stop because now we have the great pleasure of hearing Rustam Muradov. And now we have competitor 11 performing Rustam Muradov from Russia. Rustam is supported by Club 32 donor Bunny Gardner Hill. It's one of the eight competitors who joined the competition late in January this year. Rustam is playing Carl Vine Tocatissimo, which was commissioned by the Sydney International Piano Competition in July 2012. Rustam Muradov, how lovely to meet you virtually. Me too. I saw that you studied the piano with Marina Wolf, whom I met once in St. Petersburg, and I know that she was considered the greatest piano teacher for young people. I know she died a few years ago, but tell us about your experiences with her. Really, I don't even know that you met with, with her. Yes, she was a great teacher, first of all and uh, she uh, educated many many wonderful pianists really like Polina Setinska, Alexander Zandler uh, which was also my teacher she yes. teach very simple like mm -hmm. she didn't touch your yourself she didn't uh, pressing you every time like you have to practice you have to practice she just correct your way 
in the pianistic uh, things. Where you are sitting at the moment, there's a little upright piano. Uh, is that where you're practicing now? I, I can imagine you have to be careful with your touch on that instrument. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm, I'm practicing. Oh, it's my uh, like fairy for me because every day for six or seven hours he he <laughs> he tried to be <laughs> alive, you know. After Aww. my after after my practicing, it's um, um, old uh, factory named. Uh, uh, Red October, Krasny October. Yes, Red October, and it was it uh, in Soviet Union, the big factory, a really big factory. It was a filials um, in every city, every big city. Uh, this piano called Rostov on Don, which is named uh, like the city I'm living now. Yes, it's old piano, but still, still alive. Now, it's such a pity that you couldn't come to Sydney for this competition, but you have been to Australia before. Yes, I, it was 10 years ago. It was an amazing trip, an amazing experience for me. Uh, I lived in, uh, in in house when it was wonderful to, to Australian, which was native from England, from London or North uh, England. Uh, it, it called Barrel in Southern Highlands. Teller Heinz piano competition. Uh, I was second prize and was uh, really, really cool and, uh, and and exotic for me. I were there for three weeks, I think. I traveled to Sydney, of course. Uh, I traveled to Canberra, which we were um, the rehearsal with the orchestra before the final round, and we ah. were at also at the kangaroo farm. It was which was really amazing. For me, yes, See, seeing alive kangaroos, the little kangaroos, the kind of not uh, the highest one, the joeys, and the yeah. joeys, uh, it was so cute. Well, we look forward so much now to hearing your preliminary round and uh, wish you all sorts of luck for the whole competition. Wonderful to talk with you, Rustam. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you, me too. It was wonderful. Hello, my name is Rustam Muradov. I'm from Russia, age 33. I will play the preliminary round of Sydney Pan Am Competition 2021. Yeah. Johannes Brahms, Seven Fantasias, Opus 116.
Piano sonata in C minor. Thank you. 
Карл Вайн, токатиссимо.
And is in core, I will play Domenico Scarlatti, sonata in B minor. Well done, Rustam. Some incredible tinkling of the ivories there. I hope you enjoyed it at home too. I'd like to share some news of some of the fantastic new initiatives underway here at the Sydney, including the exciting new competition, Composing the Future. It's designed to support Australian composers and pianists. Now, the aims of the Composing the Future project are to encourage the new Australian piano compositions and to build more Australian repertoire for the solo piano. We're going to encourage composers to write works appealing to performers, encourage performers to support the composers of their time. Composing the Future is currently open for applications until the 10th of December this year and invites composers to submit a new solo piano work. 
The winner will attract a substantial cash prize of $20,000 and a world premiere performance of their piece by the first prize winner of the 2021 online competition. Other entries will be up for prizes and performances too. Composing the Future is supported by Creative Partnerships Australia through Plus One, so an enormous thank you to them also. You can visit thesydney.com.au for more information. And now we have competitor 12, Alexander Malikov from Canada, supported by Club 32 donor Professor Michael Stubbs in celebration of Australian penis Ruth Gerald. Alexander is one of eight competitors who joined the competition in the final moments. He describes the challenge as a special kind of honour that it brings a unique spontaneity in the music he's playing. Let's find out more about him from Piers. Alexander Malikov, how lovely to talk to you. Good to see you, Piers. Now you have, I presume, a Russian name, but you're in Canada, in Toronto. And so tell me how you come to be there and what your background is. Well, I was born in uh, Russia, um, but my family moved to Canada uh, in 1999 when I was 10 years old. So I, well, we moved to Calgary first and then I went on to study in the States and decided to make uh, Toronto my home. I have to say a huge thank you to you because you were one of the people who had to step in at the very last minute, in fact, beyond the last minute, because the um, the judges were already sent some of the videos when you had to take over from somebody who pulled out for some reason. And you were just wonderful because you learned an Australian piece in an afternoon and you provided programs within days beautifully set out. You were fantastic. Thank you. Thank you so much. It was It's a tremendous pleasure uh, to be a part of this competition. And it was very exciting uh, to be, actually, I have never done uh, this kind of preparation at the last hour uh, before, and it, it's quite thrilling. That's nice. Well, you've got a good attitude. That makes a big difference. It's a tremendous pleasure. I was uh, really looking forward um, to being um, a runner-up. There's always a chance of hope. So I was, I was extremely happy. I'm glad to hear it but you must have had repertoire at your fingertips to be able to, to step in so, so late in the day with a, a big repertoire, really. Yes, the first two rounds were recorded um, within a week after uh, I was um, asked to step in. And the repertoire I, I chose was things I've played before, except for the uh, Australian piece, the Bagatelle by Carl Vine, which I, I did learn in about 45 minutes. Tell us about George Walker, because he's not often performed and you have programmed him for your final recital. Yes, he, is a, an Ameri uh, he was an American composer and uh, he was a young uh, protege, um, a very young pianist, um, concert pianist. He went to Oberlin um, at age 14 for his, uh, for his undergrad and then went on to study at Curtis and he received the highest honors and he was a great virtuoso, and then he became a, a, one of the great American composers. It's a fascinating story, and I'm so pleased that you have programmed him for Sydney. Um, I'm always interested in pianists who go beyond the normal uh, composers. Of course, I adore all the core composers like everybody else, but I think there's such a huge repertoire that doesn't get played. Are you likewise interested in, in rarer played music? more rarely played music, perhaps I should say. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. And I was very excited when I, I finally had to sit down and learn the, the uh, Carl Wein Bagatelle. It was, I really, really enjoyed working on it and it evolves so naturally. There's nothing difficult about it musically. It's all, it just, it's a, uh, it flows extremely naturally. Yeah. Really looking forward to hearing your preliminary recital. Thank you so much for stepping in so late in the day and uh, doing such a, a wonderful job and we'll really look forward to wishing you well for the whole of the competition. Alexander, thank you. Thank you so much, because it's a tremendous pleasure. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. 
like to play Bagatelle number three by Carl Wein. That is a wrap on our Sunday listening and what a musical feast this weekend has been. I hope you enjoyed Alexander's recital. Our next session is tomorrow, 2 p.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time, competitor 13, Tamila Salimjanova from Uzbekistan and Adam Balak from Hungary. Thank you to all our supporters at the Sydney and thank you for watching. Until then, goodbye. <laughs>